instructor here at Ocean Fit Studio, and today we're going to go over a few of the most common moves that you'll see during fit camp, group PT, and even your one-to-one -one sessions. This is just a quick little form check to see if you are doing it correctly. It's always helpful to refresh and go through the correct technique. So the first move we're going to start with today are squats. Pretty standard, basic move that you'll see tons of different variations at some point during your programming here. So to start with, you want your feet kind of hip width apart, maybe slightly wider. Toes pointing out, you'll know where it feels comfortable for you. And try to keep this torso as upright as possible. We'll sit back like we're sitting on a chair and squeezing the legs to come back to standing. So from the side, it should look like this. You wanna try and get parallel with your legs here and come back up. Something that's common, a common mistake you'll see a lot of people doing is trying to round to get down further. Really, you wanna make sure you're keeping the abs tight, you're pulling this together, you're keeping your chest up, you're sinking back, and you're coming up to standing. Now, in a lot of programming here at Ocean Fit, you'll see either you'll have a kettlebell in front of you like this, exact same principles, standing back, sitting back and coming to standing, or a dumbbell in the form of a goblet squat, which makes it a little easier because you want to think about having this against your chest and against your stomach as you're holding it. So if you're leaning too far forward, it's going to come out. Same if you're rounding your back, you're going to have it sitting really uncomfortably. So keeping yourself straight, lower down, and back up. The same technique applies when you're doing squat jumps. Come down, you spring up, land soft, back down into a squat. Nice and soft, you don't want to stop here and jar your knees, but continue with it. It's a nice, smooth movement. The next move we're going to work on is a kettlebell swing. Now for this, these are over in the corner here at Ocean Fit if you needed to just test yourself. A good idea is to put it on your, on your back of your head and kind of sitting up against your bum here, kind of right there, right between the cheeks, and hinging at the hips, keeping those two points of contact, the back of your head and your hips here, and get a feel for what, this, what the kettlebell swing movement actually is. So it's a hip hinge movement. So if you notice, I'm not coming down, I'm not bending my knees really far. They naturally bend slightly because I have quite tight hamstrings and come back to standing. So that's the movement that we want to replicate in our kettlebell swing. So, do you need to grab your kettlebell from the side, kind of use a little momentum to get going, and you're snapping, you're hinging at the hips. Keeping your torso nice and straight, and you're snapping your hips forward, squeezing the bum to come, to bring the kettlebell out in front of you. Now my arms are just holding it, so I'm not trying to bring it up. There's no bend in the arms. If you're bending your arms, you're trying to use them to pull it up, which is not the purpose of the kettlebell swing. It's primarily to work your glutes and your hamstrings here. So just getting that nice stretch, Almost like you're wanting to hit yourself in the butt with a kettlebell and squeezing them to come forward. So bearing in mind that not squatting, not squatting and trying to lift. That's not quite the correct movement for it there. So if you think of it as that hip hinge movement of flat and bringing your hips forward, squeezing the bum, squeezing the toe, nice and tight, bringing them together. So not trying to do this either, because that puts some extra strain on your lower back. But that nice hip hinge, like you're thrusting the air in front of you. And that's the kettlebell swing. Next exercise that we'll go through that you'll see a lot of is the plank. And there are tons of variations that we take on this. But starting with the, very, the most basic, uh, the plank. You want your arms, you want nice straight arms, you want your wrist underneath your shoulders here. And if you're on your toes, you want a nice line here. So you don't want to do any of this, none of this. 
You want a nice straight line. You want to push your shoulders back, engage your upper body there. The legs are tight, the core is tight, and you're holding this position. Now, the same can be done from your knees. Again, you have to ensure that you're not over arching your back, that you've got that nice straight line. Your abs are still pulled in. Coming into your spine there, everything is nice and tight. Your shoulders are back and down. So you're not doing this, but holding that strong position. And then from here, this is where we do a lot of different variations. So you'll notice plank jacks, keeping this plank position, jumping our feet in and out. Also, you see mountain climbers, running our feet, bringing them into our belly button, bringing our knees in to our belly button, holding this position. And similarly, the third one that you see quite frequently is shoulder taps. So we try to keep the core as tight as possible, bringing one hand to your shoulder and placing it back down again. So trying to avoid this rocking. You have a little bit, but really trying to minimize that while still maintaining that nice, tight plank position. So building on from that plank position that we just went over before, we're going to look at push-ups now. So again, you want to start the exact same as you did with the plank. So you want your wrists underneath your shoulders there. You want your abs engaged, your legs engaged, your core nice and tight. And you want to lower yourself down and fire back up. Now you have to take care not to, again, over extend your back, flare your elbows out to the side, you really want to keep them more 45 degrees, so more this position, rather than 90 degrees straight out. So that's the challenge there, to come down and back up, keeping your elbows in that same position. Now this can also be done from your knees, exact same. So think about that plank position, think about keeping it nice and tight, lowering down, and firing back up. Bringing your chest just above the floor and pushing the floor away from you to come back to the top, keeping your abs tight the entire time and protecting your lower back from doing some overarching that could potentially harm it. And that is the push-up. Again, there are loads of variations that we do, eccentric push-ups, where you go down as slowly as you can and come back up. Those are really great for building strength. If you're working on push-ups from your knees and you want to get to doing them on your toes. And of course there are other variations like tricep push-ups, which involve your hands closer and your elbows pinched to your side. But for the regular push-up, go back to that plank position, think about it and think about your elbow placements and not out like this, but rather at a 45 degree angle there. Now, the very last move that we're going to go over is definitely the Marmite move of Ocean Fit. Love it or hate it, it's the burpee. The necessary evil, or I don't know, I've, they're quite grown on me, but you're not there yet. At least you can perform them right when they do come up because they will inevitably come up in all different kinds of variations. So we'll just go through the most basic one now that you'll see. So the basic burpee here at Ocean Fit. So that is essentially, you're doing kind of a squat, bending down and placing your hands on the floor in front of you, jumping back. Again, that plank position that we've just gone through, and then jumping your feet forward to your hands, flat if possible, kind of standing up. So a bit of a squat motion and jump at the end. So whether your hands come out to the side, or they come up and reach up as high as they can. So again, really think, try not to do loads of like rounding of your back when you come down, if you think of bringing it a little flatter. And it also helps, to, again, to bring your feet flat. So this position, same cue points as with the plank. You don't want to jump out and do this because that's just going to end up harming you more in the long run. You really want to make sure you're keeping your core tight at the bottom of the burpee. 
and turning his feet. If you can only come here, that's fine. You can bring him out to the side, even better, because it'll allow you to stand up a little easier. And flat if you can. Again, it depends a little bit on your flexibility. And adding that jump with a nice soft knees, again, so we don't want to land and jar our legs like that. So, another thing that you can do if you're finding this really challenging, if you're finding, you know, maybe you're rounding and you're doing this, and you're just not quite able to get down, that's fine. Not quite able to complete the full jumping movement. Take it down, it can be broken down into an easier step. So, if you can get here, Step your feet back into that plank position. You still do the exact same movement. Walk your feet back to your hands, up, and a little jump at the end. That is absolutely fine. But think about those points. Don't let your back overarch at the end there. And really focus on kind of coming down in a little safer manner rather than just throwing yourself to the floor with an overly rounded back. Right. I think those are the five most common moves that you'll see here at Ocean Fit in different variations, but nevertheless, whether you are in group PT, whether you're a um, fit camp member, or whether you're doing one-to-ones, these will crop up. And next time they do, have a little think about these pointers here. There are plenty of mirrors if you want to check your form. You can always ask myself or Aaron if you feel like maybe you're not doing something right, something doesn't quite feel right. Or, as always, videotape yourself. So record yourself, whether you are in the studio, maybe not with other people um, in the video, unless you ask them, of course, or go home and take a video and look at yourself and see if maybe you're doing some of these things over, maybe you're rounding your back, um, where you shouldn't be and you're feeling it later but you're not noticing it at the time. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps.